English in Action's Benefit is now broadcasting live from Basalt Regional Library in the Roaring Fork Valley of Western Colorado. A few technical reminders. If you haven't done so already, please log into Zoom in step two and press start video at the bottom of your screen so we can see you. Also, there's a chat where you can ask questions later. After logging into Zoom, please be sure to scroll up for the show. There's a blue donate button near the top of the screen. Feel free to use it at any time during the program. And if you run into any technical difficulties, just relax and enjoy the show. Good evening. My name's Julie Cummins. I am co-chair of the English in Action Board of Directors, and I'm delighted to be your MC this evening. Welcome to our third annual summer benefit and our first ever virtual event. As with so many things these days, this is all new and strange for all of us. Of course, there are some upsides to this social distancing world, which we find very peculiar. Um, but for example, more than 250 households are joining us from throughout the Roaring Fork Valley and across the United States. And where a typical benefit dinner might take place over an entire evening and require you to eat overcooked chicken, tonight we'll take just an hour of your time and you can eat whatever your heart desires. So if you haven't done so already, grab a cocktail or a glass of wine and let's get started. We'd like to begin by raising a glass to today's Supreme Court ruling in favor of DACA. Cheers to America's dreamers. It takes a village to produce an event like this. I'd like to begin by thanking the Basalt Regional Library for offering this beautiful space for our stage. English in Action started as a program of the Basalt Library in 1994 before becoming an independent nonprofit 10 years later. We're so grateful for the library's ongoing collaboration and to be able to be with you here broadcasting live with enough space to be safely socially distanced. I'd also like to thank our wonderful hosts for the outstanding job they've done helping us spread the word about this event. Additionally, the work of English in Action would not be possible without the support of hundreds of businesses, grant makers, and individuals. In particular, thank you to tonight's sponsors. And finally, our deep gratitude to this evening's underwriters, Issa Caddo and Daniel Shaw, Melanie and Adam Lewis, Jill Sofer and Steve Elder, Susan Taylor and Rob Pugh, and Alpine Bank. Your generosity and faith in our work means the world to us and the communities we serve. As you're no doubt aware, tonight's event is a fundraiser for English in Action's work, building bridges of language, friendship, and understanding between diverse communities. At a time when people everywhere are confronting deep-seated and devastating divisions in our society, our mission has never been more relevant. At the same time, COVID-19 has disproportionately impacted immigrant communities. English in Action provides a vital safety net for immigrant friends and neighbors throughout the Roaring Fork Valley and the ripple effects that extend far beyond. The first half of our program introduces you to English in Action's work, and you'll have the opportunity to lend your support during a brief paddle race. The second half of the program features a very special conversation between Ali Narani of the National Immigration Forum and journalist Samuel Bernal of Radio Tricolor. Now, I'd like to introduce you to some of our staff. At English in Action, we have always believed that our community is stronger when we are more connected. Our individual and small group tutoring programs help ensure that adults in the Roaring Fork Valley have the language skills that they need to thrive and to communicate effectively. We will continue to develop and offer online services to ensure that our participants feel safe and keep learning no matter what the coming months bring. The Lasting bonds of friendship that develop between our volunteer tutors and students are equally important in fostering a healthy and vibrant community. The emergence of COVID-19 
has highlighted the role our staff play in developing these relationships. Over the years, our diverse staff have developed hundreds of friendships and ties with immigrant and non-immigrant community members. Working remotely under less than ideal conditions, we knew that we had a key role to play in our Valley's response to COVID-19. Over 70% of our students suffered sudden and significant loss of income. As an immigrant, I know how frightening and confusing it can be finding support in a new country. English in Action had two roles to play. The first, we extended a hand of friendship and compassion in reaching out to our students and tutors. Second, we connected our students to health information, financial, emergency financial assistance, and food. Our goal in doing this was to make sure that nobody fell through the cracks. Our students have expressed their deep gratitude for the support that they have received. They're happy to be part of the family of English in Action, an organization that they can trust. Many have asked us what they can do to help and have offered others food or supplies if they have more than they need. We live in an amazing valley, ready to catch people when times are tough. But even here, immigrants are vulnerable and many lack the safety net that other residents in our valley have. We are all bilingual, several of us are immigrants, and at one point or another, we have all served as volunteer tutors for English in Action. We're really proud of our staff. They're very, very dedicated to their work. I'd also like to take a moment now to acknowledge our Board of Directors and Advisory Council who give their time, energy, and wisdom throughout the year. Guess, your supporting us tonight by being here has a profound effect on the hundreds of adult students and volunteer tutors English in Action serves each year. Now I'd like to introduce you to two volunteer tutors who will help you understand how our program works and why we do what we do. I think being a tutor for English in Action has just uh, taught me um, more empathy. You never know someone's full story. And um, it's also just taught me how much I have to learn from um, my student as well. My relationship with Isabel is um, pretty uh, kind of natural and friendly. I kind of feel like we're friends and um, we get together or we talk on the phone and a lot of what we do together is just practicing conversational English and um, that really lends itself to just kind of having a low-key fun dynamic. So Graber and I have been uh, working together since the fall. We were matched. Graber lives down in Glenwood so we, we would meet at Starbucks every week. My relationship with Isabel has changed mostly logistically since COVID-19. Um, we were in the habit of meeting in person, usually at the English in Action offices. Um, that was really great because uh, it's convenient for both of us and we would occasionally you know, meet at Crown Mountain Park and go for a walk or at Red Hill and go for a hike together. But um, because we're social distancing, we've just been meeting via FaceTime. Uh, COVID, when we started to shut down in mid-March, uh, even in early March, I think there was concern and um, we would just kind of text back and forth and then we set up uh, Google Hangout meetings. And it's been great. Uh, Graber's probably one of the more positive individuals I've ever come across. I think so much of when you're working in English in Action, it's building that personal relationship, that one-on-one -on -one when you're sitting down. We now spend most of our time just on conversational English. To me, it's remarkable just meeting with an individual who we had no, con we had no connection in September uh, and just hearing his story and understanding his story. And he always has interest in what's going on in my life, my family. I think that people should support English in Action because um, it's about supporting families um, who are part of our community, building their lives, helping people integrate and feel welcome is uh, a huge part of, I think, what makes uh, our country strong and interesting. 
And when you work with English in action, it gives you a window into an incredible, you know, the majority of our valley are Spanish speakers. And so to be able to have that window and to be able to understand, and it's bringing people together rather than bring, bringing people apart. Big thanks to Tom and Olivia. Please know that we're always seeking more tutors, and you, if you'd like to tutor, we'd love to have you. You do not need to speak another language, such as Spanish, in order to participate. We have adult students of all levels and from many countries. If you're interested in becoming an Engli English in Action volunteer tutor, please visit our website at englishinaction.org. Next, you'll meet two of our students who are the embodiment of our work. I remember when I started uh, learning English uh, with English in Action, I could say just hi, hello, good morning. I've been in English in Action student. Mm -hmm. I learned to understand the language mm -hmm. and the people more mm -hmm. with they uh, speak with me. I had a big difference now. Um, my life is more easy because I can speak in English. Not perfect, but well, I can help uh, with the homework with my kids. Uh, I can read a newspaper. Uh, in this moment, it's very important for me, the English, because I am working in one, uh, with one dentist in Aspen. It's very important because all the time I go to speak with the patients because I can uh, understand the people. Miss Olivia, oh my tutor, is a blessing to me. We continue with the class um, through the FaceTime, and she's very kind, she's very young, she's very smart, and she's beautiful. My tutor and English in Action, all the time, uh, it's uh, calling me, send, sending information and text about um, information but of jobs, of food, of um, my of to ask for my situation um, about I am good or not. The word of English in Action, it's uh, great because help to me and other people to learn about the English for uh, speak with the people. It's very important here because not is my country and English in Action help me to have more confidence and speak much better. I had a better job now and uh, I can understand more when I, when I can have a conversation with another person, I feel grateful. Thank you, uh, all tutors, all people working in this program, all people support this program, uh, because now I am here speaking uh, English. Thank you, Graber and Isabel. The changes in their lives have been truly profound. And we appreciate their sharing their stories with us tonight. Lastly, I'd like to introduce you to one more person, Beatriz Ferrofino. Beatriz has been a student with English in Action for 10 years. She found out about our program from her mother, who was also a student. Beatriz now serves on our board of directors. English in Action has marked my life since the beginning because when I learned uh, about this organization, I began seeing things from a different perspective. At the beginning, when I came to this country, it was so difficult for me. I was scared, I was afraid about e everything because adapting a new culture is difficult. 
I had gained more confidence in myself, learning not just the language but creating relationships with, with my tutors. Currently, I work for Valley Settlement, a nonprofit organization. Part of my job now is being involved with the Manaus and Valley Settlement Emergency Funds. Those funds are designated for people that have been impacted by the pandemic. I think it's an essential job right now because as, as we are serving people or those who cannot obtain other benefits and without this support, they would probably be in a worse situation. I serve on the English in Action Board of Directors because I want the students' voice to be heard. Having two students in the board of directors, it's a good idea because we can explain or give uh, our point of, point of view. I believe COVID-19 impact my life in a way that I am very grateful and to see the involvement in the community. I have the great opportunity uh, to continue working at home. I know many people who have not had that possibility or that option, but I see a lot of um, involvement in the community, trying to support many people that have been affected. I think English in Action work is important. English in Action is not just an organization focus on supporting people to learn a second language, but an organization who creates strong relationships based on respect between tutors and students. Those relationships help students like me to develop a sense of strength and belonging. For many of us, English in Action is our second home. As you can see, Beatrice is a role model for all of us. Now, I'm so pleased and honored to, to introduce to you the newest member of our team, our honorary board member, Dr. Madeline K. Albright, who served as America's 64th Secretary of State. As many of you know, she is a New York Times best-selling author of several books, including, most recently, Hell and Other Destinations, a 21st century memoir. Good evening, Secretary Albright. We're thrilled you're here with us tonight. Thank you, Julie, and it's uh, great to be with you. Uh, I am so happy to be welcomed as the newest member of the English in Action team, and I'm truly delighted to be with everybody tonight. Uh, this benefit has become truly one of my favorite um, of the year, and, uh, and while I'm disappointed we can't all be together in person, I'm grateful to have this opportunity to show support uh, for this incredible organization because its mission is now more important than ever. I was deeply moved just now to hear those firsthand testimonials of the students and tutors whose lives uh, have been transformed by their participation in this program. Really, really fabulous. Uh, and their experiences, I think, send a very powerful message. The members of this community are determined to help one another and that we intend to continue this work until no immigrant is made to feel unwelcome or denied the opportunity to succeed. And in this effort, everybody can help, some with money, some with ideas, some with the ability to teach and to mentor. Uh, and uh, English in Action really needs every volunteer. We need doers, and yes, we need dreamers. By the way, speaking of dreamers, I was so pleased to see the Supreme Court today rule on their side. It sends a very powerful message that the soul of America is intact. We are strong, we are resilient, and we can still be a land of hope and opportunity. At previous English in Action galas, I've had the opportunity to share my own immigrant story, and I've spoken of arriving in Colorado as a young girl after having been forced to flee Czechoslovakia twice, first from the Nazis and then from the communists. 
My parents found a welcoming community in Denver and grew to love it. And my mother would say that there are only two great cities in the world, Prague and Denver. <laughs> my mother never tired of repeating the slogan on the Denver Post, it is a privilege to live in Colorado. Um, and we started coming to Aspen when I was a teenager because my father started doing things at the Aspen Institute. Um, and as beautiful as the surroundings were, we also truly cherished the liberty that they found. And even years later, my mother would always call on the 4th of July to ask whether her grandchildren were singing patriotic songs. As for my father, he used to cite a contrast. He talked about when we were in England during the war, people were really very kind, but they would come up to us and say, we're so sorry your country's been taken over by a terrible dictator. You're welcome here. And when are you going home? And then when we came to America, people said, we're so sorry your country's been taken over by a terrible system. You're welcome here. What can we do to help you? And when will you become a citizen? And he said, that is what made America different from other countries. And I do believe that decade after decade, the United States has been enriched by the contribution of immigrants. Yes, there are some who resent all this, and they think that the day after they entered is the day the door to America should have swung shut. But those who fear change should bear in mind that the, the people from their homes, the leaving behind of possessions and familiar sites and memories and ancestral graveyards does not occur without a good cause. And I can attest from my own experience that most of us would prefer to remain in places where our names are known and our customs accepted and our language spoken. And so as much as I believe in maintaining high levels of legal immigration, I also believe it's vital for leaders to work across international boundaries to minimize the number of people who feel that they need to leave their home countries. This requires building healthy democracies, fostering peace, and generating prosperity from the ground up. Success in that endeavor demands a way of looking at the world that recognizes the humanity we all share with one another and the interests that nations have in common. Those who are content to look inward, who see no higher purpose than to shield themselves from the different, the new and the unknown, uh, will be of no help. But those who encourage people to look outward and who see meaning in building human connection between the different and the unknown will be absolutely essential. And that is where English in action comes in. Because whether through individualized tutoring, open hours, small group tutoring, or community engagement, you make it possible for people to understand one another. And if we understand one another, is that much harder to demonize one another. And I thought those interviews showed how fantastic uh, the connections are. Because when you participate in programs such as English in Action, you're accepting a solemn responsibility, not only to live in our democracy, but to participate in it, to build stronger communities, to educate yourselves about issues of public concern and look out for your neighbors. All this matters the America of tomorrow will only be as vibrant as we make it. The United States has a proud past, but it's the future that depends on us. I, I was recently asked to describe myself in six words, and I said, worried optimist, problem solver, grateful American. Tonight, this gratitude extends not only to the country that welcomed me so many years ago, but to all of you all of you that are now a part of what we're doing together. Thank you for your support. Uh, and, and I'm so proud that you made me a part of this great organization. Thank you so very much. Good luck and let's keep doing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Secretary Albright. Beautifully said, we just couldn't be more delighted that we count you among our own. Now, our featured speaker, Ali Norani, will be coming right up, um, but we just need 10 minutes of your time for a little bit of help. I'd like to introduce you to John Goss, who many of you know from the Glenwood Vaudeville Review in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. John has agreed to help us tonight with a short paddle raise. Take it away, John. 
Thank you very much, Julie. I appreciate it. I'm very honored to be here this evening in this beautiful library in front of all these names and faces for the exciting part of this evening. I'm very proud to be part of it, and thank you for letting me. Now, uh, I, was, I, I was going back. I've got to tell you the story really quick before we get to the whole paddle raise fundraising part. I have to say it was nice to see Madeline on the camera here again. Uh, you know, she and I go back quite a ways. We really do. I mean, you could say we're kind of like this. I mean, 18 years ago, I gave her room service at the Aspen Institute at 7 o'clock in the morning. That's right. Yeah, we shared personal, you know, ideas about world conflict, political events, stuff like that. She took a couple of notes, and I greatly appreciate that. And we go back quite a ways. So I can honestly say that, like this, folks. Okay, that's me over here. She's probably there somewhere, and I have no idea who these who really cares it's time to get on with the really good part of this i gotta say though this is improv i see some names up here i've got to just say thank you so much to all these wonderful people i'm familiar with robin tolan you keep moving around you're there somewhere good to see you uh dr scheuer uh good to see your name up there it could be your 10 year old son i have no idea but uh it's nice to see names up there and we are going to get to the good part of the paddle raise the fundraising part of this in just a second just a little recap on what this is all about, the reason why we're here right now, and the reason why I'm here. Now, I need to share with you, of course, as you have learned tonight, as you've learned, English in Action's work has a deep impact on our valley. We all know that. The immigrant community has been particularly hard hit by COVID-19, which makes speaking English even more important than ever. Now, your support is needed tonight so that the English in Action staff can continue to support existing students and tutors in the coming year and meet the increased demand. Now, our paddle race, let me um, give you a little bit of information and make sure we all do this correctly so we have a really great event. This is a fundraising event, and we deeply appreciate the generous support that has already been given. There's been quite a bit of money already coming in. We'd like to add a little bit more to that to get to our goal this evening. Now, many of us have been impacted economically by the COVID-19, of course. Many can still give something. Now, if you happen to own a gardening supply company, or maybe uh, bought some shares in Zoom back in February, <clears throat> we expect you to dig deep and help out. All right, every gift, no matter how large or small, is very valuable. And we're gonna go through the whole process and different denominations in a second, but some of you have been to lots of charity events, and we are adapting this particular paddle raise to a virtual context, but we are doing it in a new way, using the miracles, of course, of Zoom. We will keep it fun, interactive, and moving right along, that is for sure. Now, if you signed up for this event early enough, you should have been received a paddle to print out. Now, I have my own to give you an example of what it's supposed to look like. They gave me a very special number, trying to give me an idea of where I sit on the ranks of numbers of people. Yes, they're trying to tell me something. I am a zero, but this is what your paddle hopefully will look like. Now, if you couldn't print it out, write your number with a black marker, on a piece of paper. And if you didn't get your number, well, write your full name and black marker on a piece of paper if you're in an image. And you also need to make sure that your camera is on. And if you would like to have your camera on so that you can be part of our paddle race, please make sure and push the start video. Okay, now if you scroll down to Zoom, it is on the bottom left of your screen. Moving on. I've got these cameras here, wonderful. Now, when you hear me say the amount that you are able to give, raise your paddle in front of the camera so that I can see it. And keep your paddle up until I read your number. That's very important. Please keep your paddle up until I say your number, and then you can put it down. Now, if you don't have a video camera, put your pledge in the Zoom chat, okay, which is also accessed on the bottom of the Zoom screen. Okay, a lot of information, but if you put in your paddle number, and your name or the paddle number and the amount or your name and the amount, then we will get that information and we will share that with everybody here this evening. Now, let's see, if you, if you didn't log onto Zoom and you can hear me, then donate using the blue button at the top of the page. The very top of your page, the blue button, you could donate on that and put your donation that way. We will get that information and we will sh share that out with you, everybody here to know how generous you are this evening. All right, now, <clears throat> it's time to get things going, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to reach in those pockets, the reason why we're here this evening, and have some fun with this. Now, we're going to start with a very important number right here. 
Now, the highest number, of course, for those that really want to show off and show everybody what they can do. And uh, we're going to start, and let me explain to you exactly what $10,000 does first. It does, it provides recruitment, training, and support for 20 new tutors. It also covers leadership training for their advanced students, okay? So we're going to start this thing off at $10,000. Do we have anybody out there? that is generous and would like to do a $10,000 donation. Do we see any pages coming up? Happy to donate. Okay, we're going to get to that in just one second. Do we see that we got that one? We're going to get to that in a little bit too. When we get them, can we get, I believe, and I do have a note that Susan and Fred Lodge, number 143, have donated $10,000. Susan and Fred, thank you very much. You can put your number down. I also would like to announce that Gail and Boogie Wineglass have also earlier today donated $10,000, their gift, for this wonderful event. So we're already starting things off at $20,000. Now we're going to give one more chance before we move on to our next number. Is there anybody else that would like to go to $10,000, be in the category of Gail and Boogie Wineglass? Anyone? As I look into our cameras and all of our pictures, I believe not. And we're going to get to that one in just a second. So we're going to continue moving, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who couldn't quite do the $10,000 mark and would like to move up to the next number or down to the next number, this is your opportunity. $5,000 underwrites a semester of small group tutoring for 20 students. So we are going to our $5,000. There we go. I believe we have Chelsea Brundage. Chelsea, thank you very much. There is a $5,000 gift right there. Is there anybody else doing a $5,000 gift as we check our Zoom chat? I don't see anyone else. Any other $5,000 gifts or donations this evening? Giving, going once, going twice. Okay, I think we are done with a $5,000 mark. Thank you very much. Chelsea Brundage, very nice. Okay, now our next number, we're going to go to the $2,500 mark. It covers our very popular immigrant voices, storytelling workshops, and events, amongst many other things. Our $2,500 mark. Is anybody on camera that would like to show us a paddle for $2,500? Anybody? <clears throat> anybody? I would like to say that we have a donation from Lisa. Okay, oh, hold on, we'll get this. John and Christine Blair, thank you, John and Christine. Number 213, we have a donation of $2,500 from John and Christine Blair. You can put that number down. Thank you very much, the Blairs. Anybody else? $2,500. Oh, I think we have Lisa Childs. You did. Lisa, put in $2,000. We've got that on our Zoom chat over here. A $2,000 donation from Lisa Childs. Thank you very much, Lisa. I keep looking at you on your image down here and you're actually in that camera there. So we have a $2,500 donation. We have a $2,000 donation from Lisa Childs. And we're going to go next to our next level. Those of you who are waiting for the $1,000 mark, this is your opportunity to put up your paddle for $1,000. Is there anybody on Zoom, Zoom chat? $1,000. Anybody over here that would like to donate? There's $115, 115 Gary Harada. Thank you, Gary Harada. We also have have Jane Grossman or Mr. Grossman. You don't look like a Jane to me, sir. There's Jane. I see her. 036. 036. Thank you very much, the Grossmans. And again, we have Gary. Oh, and there's Maggie Woods. 002. Thank you very much, Maggie Woods. And we have Patrick Curry. Thank you, Patrick Curry. Good to see your name up there. Number 555. I wish I had that number. Thank you, Patrick. You can put your number down now. We'll see anything over here on Zoom chat. Is there anywhere else somebody might be wanting to donate a thousand dollars at this time this is our last opportunity for a thousand oh here we go we want to mention that judith steinberg i saw your name up here earlier judith thank you very much judith steinberg has also donated one thousand dollars to our event this evening thank you judith i saw you on there i know you can hear me thank you very much we got you in there Okay, I believe that is the end of our $1,000, and we are moving on to our next lowest level. Those of you who are waiting for the big number of $500, it will deliver a volunteer training for 15 people. Anybody, for $500, I believe we have Patty Stranahan. Hold that up a little higher, Patty. There we go, a little bit higher, Patty. Can you go up higher? There she, there we go, 125. Thank you very much, is her number 125. We also have a $500 donation from Amy Gordon. Amy, a little higher, one, a little bit higher. Amy, a little bit higher so we can see them. There we go, sweetheart, thank you. 179 is the number we're looking for. We also have Carolyn Kane, 029. Thank you, Carolyn, $500 donation. 
We, uh, uh, we also have Robin Donnell. Thank you, Robin Donnell, number 107. We have Robin Donnell on there. Thank you. You can put that number down now. Anybody on our group chat? Nobody over here. Any other names coming in? Great. That is our $500 level. Thank you very much. Oh, there's another. Oh, we got Robin Donnell at 107. Great. I don't think she wanted to do another 500, so we're going to stick to the one 500. Thank you, Robin. You can put your number down now, Robin 107. Great, we are now gonna to move to our next denomination down, a little bit lower to the $250 mark. For $250, it pays for specialized training on distance learning for students or tutors. Wonderful thing. Thank you, $250 from Blanca O'Leary. Thank you very much, Blanca. Good to see you up there. And we have Ellen Dube. Thank you, Ellen Dube. How much your name? 201 Ellen Dube. Thank you, Ellen. 201 was also a $250 donation. We also have Tim Riggins, number 313. Tim 313. Thank you very much for your $250 donation. Very charitable. Anybody else in the two hundred? There we go. We have another one. Kim Scheuer. Thank you, doctor, very much. Thank you for about that $250 mark. We got that. And we also have number 157, Susan Rutledge. Susan, thank you very much. 157, you can put your number down. Thank you, Susan Rutledge. Another $250 mark. And we've got another one. Let's see. Oh, okay. We have, we have a late one, Cynthia Goldsmith. Thank you, Cynthia. You have actually gone above the 250, so I guess you're going to add 250 for your husband, reaching a total of $500. Thank you, Cynthia. We've got Mrs. Goldsmith at $500. Thank you very much. We've got you down there. Okay, I think that, uh, Susan, we do have you. Thank you, Susan Rutledge, 157. You can put your number down. We've got that down. And I think that ends our $250 mark. And if those of you are just waiting for the next number, this is our chance. We're going to go to $100 next. Anybody in the $100 range, they would like to share with us this evening. Heck, we might have already donated everybody in the higher marks. But we're going to go with our $100 mark right now. It covers books, supplies, and training materials for a student or tutor pair. Student tutor pair, $100. Anybody over on our Zoom chat? They might have already given higher marks as it is. But that's it, $100. Anybody on our group chat over here? Nope, our last one is still $500 from Ms. Goldsmith. Any other $100 donations at this level right now? I don't believe I see any marks going up. Okay, fair enough. That ends our $100 mark. Now, I just want to put this out there just in case somebody's really rich and really wanted to wait for the last minute to make a splash. Is there anybody who would like to make a higher donation for any reason or any other number at any time? Please just put that into Zoop chat, even if it's $235. There we go. We got Beatrice. Okay, let me get this. I want to say right, Ferrofino. I want to hope I say that correctly. Beatrice, that was a good one. Thank you very much. $100 from Beatrice. Thank you very much. That is number 401. I think that is our final donation at $100. Are there any other donations of any kind? We'll take $23.75 if you would prefer to go that route. I see some. Thank you, ma'am, for smiling. Heather, you're the only one that laughed at my, any of my jokes tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I, think, I think that might be it. If there's anything else we missed uh, in the way of our, our paddle raise, uh, then please feel free to go to our group chat. Go to the top. Push that button. Is there any? Okay, let me get this last one, just in case you're wondering. Fantastic. Lynn Nichols. Lynn, thank you. $2,500 from Lynn Nichols. Lynn, thank you very much. An extra $2,500 last minute just to end this thing off with a bang. Very kind of you. Lynn, $2,500. Wonderful. I think, oh, oh, there we go. We've got another Julie Goldstein. Did she, oh, we have, we have oh, Goldsmith and Julie Goldstein. Thank you very much. And that's another $250. Thank you very much, Julie Goldstein. $250, number 038. Thank you. Uh, and that might be it. Is there anything else? Just one last minute. Well, I appreciate it. I feel very honored to be part of this this evening. I think I'm just going to wrap this thing up. Thank you. Thank you to all of you folks right here. Now, we want to make sure that you all know how we're going to collect from you this evening. And uh, so I'm going to give you just a couple little instructions really quick right here. Now, after the event ends, press the Donate button and make your donation using a credit card, of course. And please put your paddle number in as a note to the English in Action staff. Go to the top of the screen and push that button, okay? Also, if you want to write a check, you can do that also. Just write that out to John Goss. G-O, I'm just kidding. Write that out to English in Action. Send that in the mail uh, to this address, and we'll make sure that gets in the appropriate spot. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is an honor system, and I know we've got some wonderful people here amongst us, and uh, we've got it all on recording anyway, not tape. Nobody uses tape anymore. This is a recording, and we thank you so much. I am done. Bless you all. So good to see so many faces here. I'm going to turn this back over to Julie and let her finish things out. Thank you, dear. Thank you, John, and thank you to everyone who donated tonight. Three months ago, could any of us have conceived of a Zoom paddle raise? I, I couldn't. And now for our featured presentation, we're so delighted to welcome a conversation with immigration expert Ali Nurani of the National Immigration Forum. And facilitating the conversation is Samuel Bernal. Um, we're, Samuel is a vice president at Entrevision, which, is the, uh, which owns Radio Tricolor. He is the primary voice of that radio station in our community. He gives his time to many community organizations, including serving on the English in Action Board. Samuel, take it away. Thank you, Julie. I'd like to start by introducing Ali Nurani, the executive director of the National Immigration Forum, a nonpartisan advocacy organization working with faith, law enforcement, and business leaders to promote the value of immigrants and immigration. Ali has appeared on numerous national and local radio and TV news programs, including MSNBC, Fox News, PBS, CNN, and more. He is the author of There Goes the Neighborhood, How Communities Overcome Prejudice Admit the Challenge of American Immigration, and is host of the Only in America podcast. Good evening, Ali. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here, or wherever I am. But it's great to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Before we start, I'd like to let the audience know that if they have questions for Ali, they should put them in the Zoom chat box and we'll get to as many as we can at the end of the conversation. Ali, I would like to start uh, asking you, how did you get involved with the National Immigration Forum and what does it mean to you personally? Well, I think today is the perfect example of why this work is so incredibly important, not just to myself, but really to the country, because you know, today was a remarkable day for the United States. 700,000 young people were protected from deportation by the Supreme Court. Uh, millions and millions of Americans who've come to know, to respect, to admire, to depend on, to love dreamers and DACA recipients uh, are happy. Um, so it's just an incredible day for the United States. Um, so for me, it, it's it's you know I, I sent my staff an email earlier this or earlier this evening, you know, kind of getting through this day of this intensity, and I just said, you know what, I've come to realize how dumb lucky I feel to do this work, um, and I just have to say that uh, part of that luck that I feel every single day is because every single day we come across organizations like English in Action that are doing such incredible work and communities across the country, and in this case, helping immigrants and refugees in the Roaring, Roaring Pork Valley reach their fullest potential. So um, there are just so many things to be uh, grateful for uh, that the, the, you know, I could talk for two hours just about that. Yes, it was a surprise, all the news this morning, and it was a, a good day, and we're happy to, to be in this day uh, with our event. And Ali, something I, I admire about you is that you work making coalitions like because it's you know it's very it's very easy to destroy it's, but it's hard to build and I think it, ha it has something to do or it's uh, something similar what you do and what we do in English in action that is building bridges what do you recommend in these times that there is a lot of um, radicalization how can we be better neighbors how can we get to understand each other's better in these times? You know, I, I think that's one of our biggest challenges as a country these days is that, you know, how do you sit and how do you listen to what somebody is saying and what it means to them, but ultimately what it means to you. So back in 2011, you know, for, first of all, the National Immigration Forum has been around since 1982. In our DNA as an organization has always been coalition building. But in 2011, we made this very, very intentional decision that we were going to spend the majority of our resources on the engagement of conservative and moderate faith, law enforcement, and business leaders. And the value proposition that we came up with, I think was really important because 
the case that we wanted to make was that whether you hold a Bible, you wear a badge, or you own a business, you want a common sense solution to the immigration system. Um, and what we found is that whether you are a pastor in South Carolina, a business owner in Aspen, in fact, uh, Warren Klug, who was at the, I think Aspen Square Inn was one of our earliest uh, key partners, um, or you are in a law enforcement, or you're, you're, you're a police chief or a sheriff, you, you know, for us, we realize that it's not about the politics of the policy around immigration, but it's around the values and the culture that different communities and different perspectives bring. So to answer your question, I think it's really important that as we are working through issues, whether it is around justice for immigrants or racial justice, that we sit and we have the conversations that create the tension and that ultimately we come to understand, okay, where are you coming from? Where am I coming from? Where can we agree? But also where can we respectfully disagree? And I think if there's anything that's the country's lacking these days is um, the ability to respectfully disagree. Yes, now that you mentioned uh, racial justice, we are living very intense historical moments. And I would like you to tell us what similarities you find between our brothers with the black community and the immigrant community? You know, that's a really, really difficult question. Um, and, you know, I got just like everybody, I'm sure, uh, as part of this event, but all of us across the country, we're all thinking about racial justice and the systemic reforms that are necessary. And I will be the first to say that the challenges and the injustices faced by the black community are fundamentally different by Uh, those that are faced by the immigrant community. Um, and I think we have to respect the, the struggle that the black community has, un, has, has taken on for decades, if not hundreds of years. Um, but I think what we can learn, and there's this amazing book written by uh, 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 David Chappelle, Chappelle, Chappelle um, who's a, a Christian author, and he makes the case that uh, um, in, within the civil rights movement, it wasn't the, the policy elements, it wasn't the political power that was just developed. It was really the ability of whether it was white communities or black communities to be able to speak to the broader American public through a faith lens and to be able to say, you know what, as a country, uh, we are a, a, a mix of cultures um, and that through this national identity of being a part of the United States, we can reach a resolution on civil rights. It's ongoing. Um, and I think today was a, a very important step forward in terms of justice for immigrants. Is there a country that you will choose as a, um, as a role model as a role model for immigration and, and could it be possible to apply this in America? You know, I've been thinking about that question a lot and because I've been thinking quite a bit about global migration. So let me go back to today. So today we are all thinking about this amazing uh, 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 um, events that happened in the Supreme Court. But I began my day flipping through the Washington Post and I saw that I was on the, the, the internet and I saw that there was a release by the United Nations for this year's number of people forcibly displaced. 79.5 million people have been forcibly, forcibly displaced. 30 to 34 million of those people are refugees. Out of that nearly 80 million people who have been forced from their home, um, how many Madeleine Arnwights are there? How many Albert Einsteins? You know, pick your, pick your amazing person. So when you ask the question of, of you know, what is the best role model for immigration? I still believe that it's the United States. And we're certainly going through a, a challenging moment when it comes to immigration policy. But I have to believe that we as a nation remain the beacon of hope for immigrants and refugees around the world. And we've got to make sure that our immigration system uh, uh, um, is in a position to live up to the, the, the hope that that beacon provides. You have mentioned before that there are like uh three big anxieties when, when people talk about immigration. What is the cultural, uh, I don't know, the economy and the security. In English in Action, we, we work especially in the first one, the cultural. How important do you think it is to work in the cultural side for society to understand immigration better? There is nothing more important, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, Nothing more important. Um, in fact, we have done research uh, at the end of last year. We just are coming uh, out uh, later this summer with a massive research uh, study. And time and time again, what is shown in this research is that for conservatives in particular, for conservatives in particular, the people that we need to help understand uh, uh, why these anxieties are actually opportunities, 
to be able to talk to them about how immigrants are learning English and becoming Americans, how through a person's faith that welcoming the stranger is more than you know, words in print. It is actually how uh, so many people live their lives. Uh, um, the cultural conversation opens the door to the facts that are around, you know, the economic case or the security case. But I have to say that, um, you know, helping immigrants learn English and then being able to tell the broader public about how that is done and what happens as a result for all of us uh, is, is, you know, I honestly, I, I don't think there's anything more important that we should be doing as a movement these days, other than talking to you as culturalist issues. Right now, we are all facing the, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the immigrant community faces uh, deeper challenges when it comes to, to COVID-19, you know, because uh, the work we do, we have more stress, less time to rest, and we are essential workers, and we're working in the production of food or, or healthcare, or even construction. And what do you think COVID-19 has teach us as a community? Well, I think COVID-19 has, has taught the immigrant community so much, but I think, frankly, more importantly, it has taught the rest of the country so much about the immigrant community. Um, so earlier, you know, at the beginning of the, this awful pandemic, we were able to team up with a coalition that came to be known as All of Us, and the website is allofuscare.com. And you, it's this amazing coalition because you have, you know, the immigration advocacy organizations like the National Immigration Forum, you have the Southern Baptist Convention, you have the Catholic Conference of Bishops, you have the National Urban League, you have the NAACP, you have Unidos, and all these organizations collectively are saying, all of us, regardless of where we were born, are part of the response to COVID-19. 29,000 DACA recipients are on the front lines of healthcare. 75% of of uh, farm workers are immigrants, 40% of food packers. And to your point, you know, most of us who are part of this event, uh, um, with the exception of the media, you know, we can all, we can work from home, right? We don't have to go to a meeting. We don't have to go to an event necessarily. The immigrant community by and large uh, doesn't have that luxury, whether they're on the front lines of the response to COVID-19 or, you know, part of, you know, critical parts of, of the economy and manufacturing or otherwise. Um, so I think the American public has truly come to appreciate to a greater degree the contributions of immigrants uh, and why they are so, so critical to our health and our safety. What is the current status of immigration in the United States? Is it harder for undocumented immigrants to come to the United States than to document it, or is there a certain type of immigrants that have it harder to come to the United States? How much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're <laughs> you know, I look, you know, we're a nonpartisan organization. We do a lot of work with uh, uh, conservatives, you know, Republicans, independents, you know, Democrats. Um, but we also feel like we have a responsibility to speak the truth. And the truth is that it is harder to come to the United States uh, than ever before. You know, from a legal immigration perspective, our, you know, the number of refugees that we're going to we're going to resettle this year has been slashed to, I believe, 15,000. Um, you know, the president at the beginning of, early on in the COVID-19 pandemic, he issued a proclamation to suspend uh, certain types of legal immigration. In fact, over the course of the pandemic, the administration has issued 46 uh, orders to limit legal immigration. Now, let me be clear. Some of those orders or changes have been uh, appropriate for public health reasons. But of those 46, more than half of them have no end date. So, you know, we've got a long hill to climb here um, because, you know, legal immigration piece by piece has been curtailed. Um, it is, you know, the border enforcement measures. I mean, the asylum system in essence has been ended uh, um, and during the pandemic and it was been slow to a trickle before the pandemic. So, you know, in the years ahead, whether it's a second term of the Trump administration or another president, we just have a lot of work to do. And that's why I think that the coalition building and the work that English in Action does is so critically, critically important. If there was an action that you would recommend uh, our audience to do right now to help the immigrant community, what, could, what would it be? Well, I mean, I think one thing is, um, you know, given today's tremendous uh, uh, decision coming out of Supreme Court, 
I think that Republicans and Democrats in Congress need to work together to move forward on a permanent solution for dreamers. Um, and, you know, look, you know, Michael Bennett, uh, the Democratic senator in Colorado, is very, very positive on uh, these issues, especially with, with regards to dreamers. So is Cory Gardner. So I think, uh, you know, if there's an advocacy ask that I would make is to pick up the phone, call up Cory Gardner, call up Michael Bennett and say, you know, you two need to work together to get a bill to the United States Senate uh, that protects dreamers. Um, I think that that would heal some of the divisions in the country um, that would protect hundreds of thousands of, of immigrants who are contributing, and it would help millions and millions of Americans be continue to better understand the value of immigrants and immigration to the U.S. Yes, and, and maybe also helping and donating to organizations like English in Action too, that, that, that really makes a difference. I, I see it here in our community, how important it is to have an organization like this and uh, all the help to, to the immigrants, they feel it more like a place that they will learn some English, it's almost like a, like a home, like a second home for, for them too. And let's see, we have uh, some questions from the audience. We have, okay, we have one from Fidel Duke. Do you want to rethink that strategy for focus on faith, police, and business? Do you want to rethink it? Do you want to rethink that strategy? You know, that's a good question. In fact, uh, um, maybe he was in my board meeting last week <laughs> because <laughs> we we're actually having that conversation. <laughs> okay, you know, what is, what's, the, what's the important way to be doing coalition building? Um, you know, so where we landed, and I'm certainly there personally, is that I think this type of coalition building is going to be more and more important moving forward. Because remember, in order to pass a law in Congress, particularly the Senate, you need 60 senators. Um, so that means that even if the Democrats take over the Senate, you're still going to need Republicans. Uh, um, and, and so there's a political reason to do it, but I also think there's a cultural reason to do this work, is that, um, you know, by 2040, 70% of the population is going to live in 15 states. That means 30% of the population in the United States is going to live in 35 states. Um, and these are going to be states with fewer people, with fewer immigrants. So that means that every single policy debate that we have in Washington, D.C. is going to run right into a cultural clash. So we've got to get ahead of that. And, and I think that coalition building um, across constituencies and across partisan lines is, is incredibly important. We have a last question by our director, Lara Bulo. And what can you tell, or can you tell the story about a community or individuals finding unexpected common ground around immigration? That's a great question. So I, first of all, I just really want to commend uh, Lara's leadership. It's, again, it's just an incredible organization. I'm so, so thrilled to be uh, with everybody this evening. So that was also my opportunity to kind of think through an example for you. <laughs> So I would point to um, actually something that's going to happen. Uh, it's happened this week is that in South Carolina this week, um, South Southern Baptist churches received thousands of masks made by refugees who are living in a refugee camp in Lesbos, Greece. Um, and something special is happening in South Carolina right now because these congregants are seeing that refugees in Greece who are part of the 79.5 million people who have been forcibly, forcibly displaced, they, are they have the opportunity to learn about the humanity of that, that refugee and what that refugee is doing for the safety and the health of that congregant. Um, and that's just a, a, a really, really special thing. Ali, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are so grateful for the time you generously spent with us this evening. And now, I would like to turn over to Julie to close out the evening. Thank you, Samuel and Ali, for that enlightening conversation. John, do we have a total? Uh, well, I do. But before we get to that total, ladies and gentlemen, uh, while we were doing our wonderful paddle raise, there were quite a few people that came online, kind of another direction that we weren't able to announce. So I would like to go through these really quick and make sure you all know, first of all, uh, we're very pleased to announce that Robert Pugh and Susan Taylor, I think we're over here on this site, you have donated, ten, they have donated $10,000, also on that $10,000 list. Bless you. Thank you very much. We're also going to go to uh, Catherine and Thomas Reagan have donated $500. Thank you. Robert and Chris Hubble have donated $2,500. Thank you. 
Sam Corbin also is $100. Thank you, Sam. Every bit counts. Elizabeth and John Adams, $250. Diane Doolittle, $250. Let's see. I'm not done yet. We have Julie and Dan Fuhrborn. I want to say that right. I believe that is correct. $250 from Julie and Dan. Elizabeth Bell is $100. Thank you very much for that $100. And we've got James and Diane Light. $1,000 from James and Diane Light. Thank you. Jean Campbell and Patrick Morrissey. $1,000 also. This is great. All stuff we weren't expecting, we didn't do earlier. We have Mimi Schlumberger at $100. Thank you, Mimi. We also have Robin and Peter Van, oh, Van Domelin. I hope I'm saying that right. At D or a B? Don't, it's handwritten. Domelin, D. I believe. Great name. Five, am I saying that right? Yeah. $500. <laughs> Thank you. And we also have Nancy Kleiber at $100. And Natalie Travers at $250, Aww. and a good friend of mine, Mr. Thomas Ward, at $100. Thank you all so much. Those are the people right there that have put us to this level. We have added all this up. I want to make sure I've got it right. We have a total for this evening and earlier donations for the total for this fundraiser of $190,669 <gasps> total. Everything. So wonderful. Woo! Thank you. I think we're all happy. <laughs> I think considering this is during uh, the trying times we're all aware of, I think everybody will consider that a really good win, and I'm proud to be part of it. Thank you, and all these wonderful people have made this all happen, and there's so many people back here that have done that. You saw their names earlier, and I'm going to let Julie finish this <laughs> thing out. <laughs> Thank you so much to each and every one of you who have joined us this evening. We so appreciate your time. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your caring. We could not do what we do without you. I especially want to thank Versatile Productions for making this possible. Plus another big thanks to, to John Goss, to Samuel Bernal and Ali Narani, all who volunteered their time. And a big special thanks to Madeline Albright for, again, joining the team. Thank you to our wonderful guests. Have a great evening. Time for a glass of champagne. Yeah. Good night. Good night.